here I am. Hey, nice. Woo. Nice. <laughs> You, you're quite a, I gotta say, you're quite a snazzy dresser, Gio. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> There's, I, I was watching some of your flute solo videos. Um, uh, and you yeah. have like this nice pink suit jacket blade. Ooh, on. yeah, that, that's my favorite. That's good stuff right there. <laughs> yeah, mine, my, this is like, I don't have any flashy blazers, but I'm a big blazer fan, so I can appreciate it. I'm a flute player, so you can't expect anything less, you know, <laughs> divas, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, a, fl is that a flute thing? Apparently, yes. Hmm. Um, although I have seen some other instrument players also, you know, be like on point and super flashy and all that. But usually the standard of flute players, you know, they just want to, you know, be special. So That's fair. That's fair. You know, it's yeah, part of it. There, there are definitely some kind of piano soloists and violinists who... You know, in a concerto type situation, they go all out. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So how are you? How are you doing? Man, I'm doing good. I actually have a another Zoom meeting at four uh, oh, with really? a, being the guest artist for a business class in UF, hmm. uh, University of Florida. Oh, nice. And see, so they just want to know, you know, my experiences as crossing over from classical to jazz and all, everything. But let's just say classical to anything that is not classical. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. but, but, you know, usually people call it jazz, but, you know, it's not. Yeah. So that is, it's been interesting. Yeah, I was just talking to another friend of mine who worked on the album about how important it is, especially nowadays, for musicians to be well-rounded and familiar with multiple different styles. And, you know, even especially for instrumentalists to not just be performers, but to be their own kind of recording studios, to be able to promote themselves on social media outlets, to, you know, be able to do a little bit of arranging and composing themselves. We kind of have to do it all nowadays. Yeah, it's ever evolving and, you know, and the same thing should happen with curriculums in, mm -hmm. in universities. It's like, okay, so let's just now make it mandatory that everybody should take music technology and, you know, get to know how to at least set up uh, USB mic, you know, the, oh, at least, yeah. you know, the basic, you know, at least you yeah. do. Yeah, a really nice mic. It looks like an, like an like Newman. Yeah, it's a, it's a Rode microphone. Rode, yes. Nice, NT5? It's a NT1A. NT1A. Nice. I, got this, it's a, I got this a while ago. I feel like I've had this for about 10 years, but it's a quality microphone. It's a vocal mic, so it's kind of got that yeah. one direction. Um, and I got this pop filter. So, yeah, I've been. I mean, this past year, I don't know about you, I've, <laughs> I've gotten really comfortable with my recording software. I've had to get yes. to know how to make myself sound as good as possible through electronic means. You know? Yeah, that's, I think that's the reality for most of us that dare to, you know, study this and make it work. So yeah. good job, man. Good yeah. job. Well, How's everything going yeah, with the recording, with the, with the CD releases about is is this month right it's well it's almost it's almost april i think it's the 31st yeah. today when we're recording this. yeah but of course when people are watching this yes it is this month it's the 30th of april <laughs> yeah that's coming pretty well i mean everything's recorded everything's in the can ready to go it's just a matter of kind of promoting it and uh, promoting the musicians on it which if you're watching this video that's what this is i'm i'm talking yes. to dr giovanni perez <laughs> and you played a little bit of flute on one of the tracks. When I say a little bit of flute, I mean you 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 played some you played the heck out of your flute. <laughs> sure. A few notes. Yeah, just a few, just a fair few. Yeah. I'm I'm so interested because okay, so I met you in the Deep Roots Ensemble at Stony Brook University. And I feel mm -hmm. like I've I've said that same sentence to like three or four people I've interviewed so far, where the Deep Roots Ensemble really became for me one of the highlights of my. Stony Brook University experience and also put me in touch with so many incredible musicians such as yourself. And so I was wondering how you kind of wound up in the Deep Roots Ensemble and how you developed your your geo sound. Because I got to say, you, you got a one of a kind, wonderful virtuosic uh, flute playing style. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that it could be a long answer. It can be a short one. You say the geo sound and that's that's really funny and humbling. <laughs> mm. And I think the main thing was to just play flute. 
you know, I'm usually uh, a lot of people. I said, so you play classical flute or you play jazz flute? I said, mm. I I play flutes. Um, and having that mentality of of just being able to play your instrument doesn't matter in one style because it's still a flute. Uh, you get to absorb more of the style. And again, when we met at, at the Deep Roots Ensemble, and it was my first experience trying to go in this world of of country music that I, I just now feel 2% more comfortable um, mm. in it just because it's, it's, it's like learning how to speak another language, saying it differently, a different accent. Yeah, it was just a matter of being sensitive to to what you hear, to the melodies, to the to the lyrics, you know. Um, uh, if the lyrics are saying something about wind, then why not complement it with wind? Or uh, uh, So it's just creating this little movie like with images uh, mm. as best as i can with uh, with the flute uh, that complements what's happening musically and lyrically yeah i think it's also handy you know in kind of the bluegrass country kind of sound world we were playing and performing in like with some instruments in that kind of ensemble like the banjo there are like mm-hmm. very particular schools of thought and like styles and artists that you can emulate. But when it comes, as far as I know, when it comes to bluegrass flute playing, there isn't really a solid blueprint on that, you know? No. So it was, I imagine it was a fun place to explore with very, very few kind of preconceived notions about what it should sound like. Yes. And that also puts a lot of pressure in me as a flute player because, you know, people be like, that doesn't sound like a violin fiddle, you know, or whatever. <laughs> it's like, I know. I mean, they can play, you know, two notes at a time. Yeah. You know, it, it's part of kind of like having that drone The same thing as with the banjo. There's this string where it's just, you know, they tune it and it just sounds the same thing. So it's yeah. the same concept. I try to the best of my abilities to take as an example, as a guide, the fiddles and the banjo, just the way they kind of, accents right mm. and you know try to at least start a, a history in the flute with a with a bluegrass i'm pretty sure that i'm not the first one but you know as you said you don't hear that much in the recording so it's out there it's recorded and might as well you know try to do my best totally yeah well d- definitely check out the deep roots ensembles um albums uh to hear some of geo and my, and myself playing some music and then contemporary cowboy is the track that you played on my album so listen to some yes. playing on that when that comes out I, I was wondering in terms of when you were growing up and kind of starting to play the flute were you more classically oriented more jazz different styles how did you kind of start okay so my father plays the piano right mm-hmm. and my mother sings and played some drums right and we went to church since I have memory. So I grew up hearing my dad play, you know, church music. And also he used to play it in, in salsa music, uh, salsa bands as well. Oh, nice. So that's my, you know, that's what I knew that music was. I didn't get to hear classical music um, until I was in 12th grade. Oh, that, wow. was, that was uh, my first time that I went to see a symphony orchestra live and uh, that changed everything and like mm. thanks to that i said you know i want to study music for some reason you know yeah. and uh, yes uh, when i was you know learning the flute we use the same books that everybody uses the essential elements you know and, you know they have like a more like a commercial pop ish hip-hop whatever so that was pretty normal to me since we were in church we used to play that also that type of contemporary-ish popular music but um it wasn't my classical development it didn't exist until late high school so that was my main roots if i want to use that word uh was in anything but classical (laughs) interesting so did you did you become comfortable with improvisation before kind of the more classical method of learning yes the thing is it's funny because classical is it's beautiful. It's incredible. It, you know, gets you disciplined, but you learn how to improvise just by repeating, you know, stuff. It's like when you're a kid and say, like, say Dada, and you're like, yeah, yeah. and then you start saying Dada. Yeah. Uh, and then you, you know, Dada, do the do the do the. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, right. You just start <laughs> scatting at an early age. <laughs> uh, 
uh, but the thing is, it was just so normal to just hear, for example, in church, they'll be singing this hymn, and I'll be just playing the hymn and then doing variations. It just came naturally. It's just I didn't, I didn't never thought that oh, I shouldn't do this. I should stick to the to the melody because this this is the way. You know, mm-hmm. anything was valid, and thanks to that, I guess before getting into classical, where it's like, no, you play just C. Yeah. Not anything else, you know, C. So, so yeah, I, I guess that really, really helped the improv area. Yeah, totally, totally. I was scrolling back a little bit through your various social media feeds prior to our interview. <laughs> Have you been nominated for a Latin Grammy? Uh, that was in 2015. Wow. That's cool. <laughs> That's funny. Um, <laughs> it, it was a cool experience. And you know what? I recorded two tracks in that album. It was funny. One was Flute and one was Piccolo. But the main thing was suggesting what to put or what not to put, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, in the, I think the, the CD was a 10 or 11 track CD mm. or album. And, you know, we're just always listening to us like, man, I think that you should take this out or I think that you should put this in or whatever. I don't hear this all very clear. And I didn't know that what I was doing was being a producer. It's like telling you mm-hmm. what to do. It's not exactly, people think of a producer of, of like something, you know, out of this world, at least that was my perspective. But a producer is just having a sound in your head and just try to make it happen um, on an album. By that, they just put me as a producer uh, of the album that ended up getting nominated. Oh, nice. Uh, so I'm a nominated Latin Grammy producer since nice. 2015. That's great. Uh, one of my goals is, you know, to eventually release my music and, and see what happens. You know, it'll be cool to have one of those trophies. It doesn't mean anything. It's just, you know, it'll be like, here's my Grammy, you know. And that's it. It doesn't yeah. do anything. But, you know, people like to see it. And, nice you know, that's have. good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, took a, you took a photo. I think you took a photo recently, like in a thrift store where there was like some Grammy looking. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, with it. <laughs> yes, it was so funny. It was hilarious. Uh, just because of, also my friend, the, the one that um, the main artist of the album mm. uh, 2015, um, he actually finally won a Latin Grammy. Uh, in December of, of 2020, so oh, wow. you know it, it was it was a big celebration, uh, you know, well, virtual celebration, but uh, yeah, but yeah. And you had a virtual graduation around that time. Um, right? Yes, yes, as well. How how was that? Were you just at home? Yes, I was at home. I didn't get my my regalia, but I dressed mm-hmm. up nicely, saw my name on TV, and that was it. That's- <laughs> Okay. You know, yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's okay. But the main thing was like, I need my diploma because usually, if you don't have it written, it's like, oh, then it's not official, you know. So sure. So sure. it was it was good to have it. So especially for like these more academic applications you're putting out. Like, yes. You have the piece of paper for it. Yeah. Here it is. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. Yeah. That's right. I didn't fake it. Dang it. Yeah. <laughs> so in preparation for your upcoming interview at, at four what advice would you give a classical musician in regards to exploring other styles of music and, and becoming more comfortable well it goes back to what i said earlier if you play trumpet just play the trumpet and this is something that i learned from ray anderson my my professor at stony brook of the jazz department it was just so eye-opening to hear you know just play and, and, you know, even if, if you, what it sounds is like, it's like, that's fine. That's great. You know, now make it sound like music when you place it on a space and in a way that it's music. And I was like, what the nonsense are you talking about? You know, but it, it, it was just so great to allow myself to play wrong mm. in the mm. classical standards. So allow myself to, to just explore. Okay, so let me see how this ugly noise sounds and see if i can produce it and just it just open oh so i now know how to make this noise now let's try to make this other noise so it's just expanding the palette of colors and then when you put that all into just one thing 
you are already a more versatile musician. And for all my classical colleagues out there, to the best of your abilities, just get rid of the critic that is there mm-hmm. saying, your sound is not so well centered. Your vibrato is not so, it's too narrow. Oh, it's too wide, isn't it? Just play. And remember what made you, what was the spark that made you study music in the first time? Because it's so easy to just focus in all the work and all the work and then just playing is just a pain because you're just, it's work for you. It's not fun. It's not more joy. So sometimes not taking yourself so seriously helps in enjoying as much as you can making music. Yeah, that's good advice. For for those watching who don't know who Ray Anderson is, he is an incredible improviser and trombone player who teaches at Stony Brook University. I wish I had had the credits and the time to have done something with him while I was at Stony Brook, but I also had the good fortune in my undergrad to be able to study with an improviser there named Matt Turner, who plays cello. Mm -hmm. And I was in this faculty-led improvised ensemble, and it was eye-opening to me as, as a composer I'm very accustomed to being able to really just write what I want to write and what mm. fe- and what feels good for me and what sounds good for me. And I can take kind of full ownership of what I've created. But I remember after a, a performance of improvised pieces that we had pr- uh, performed downtown, we kind of were unpacking the experience. And a lot of the instrumentalists were saying, this is like, the first thing, the first performance that I've really been able to say was mine, you know, mm-hmm. where it's, we're so used to in this classical model of, of musical education, we're so used to being taught, well, those are the notes, so those are the notes you play, and then it says piano here, so it's going to be soft, and, you know, there are certain musical parameters that are already set in place for you. And there's a little bit of, you know, you can be expressive and put your own touch on things within those constraints. But oftentimes you're just doing it how your teacher wants you to do it. And so for these mm-hmm. people to have kind of this musical experience and this ultimately a, a, an improvised composition at the end of it, that they were able to say, yeah, that was 100 percent my decision and my choice. And that's empowering. And I think musically, it bears really exciting results, too. Mm-hmm. So, okay, I, I encourage people to, to go check out Gio and, and his, his flute <laughs> videos. Because you've been doing these great covers of, of songs, and I was listening to a couple of them. Now, are those just you click play on the accompaniment track and you're improvising over on top of that? Yeah, um, my wife was saying, hey, you know, it's been a while since you haven't been able to serenade me you know, in a live concert. So, mm. you know, let's make something happen. So I looked at some of the most decent karaoke's, decent, you know, quote unquote, sure. karaoke. <laughs> and <laughs> I just, you know, press play and, uh, you know, put my flute through the system and, and that's it. And I just live stream a love concert. Um, so it was a, a series of, of videos inspired on that. But yeah, that was my take on those love songs. That's great. It's interesting. The more of these interviews and talks I have, the more connections I'm making between conversations I've had with other people. But I was talking with a friend about, you know, if you get overly perfectionistic about what you do, it can be very paralyzing in terms of putting content out there where you're like, oh, geez, like people are actually going to see this and listen to this. So to to have it just be an improvised thing, is it... Are, now, are you just like, I'm going to do one take of this and that's it? Or That was the main reason that I did it live was because if I decided to record that, mm. I would be making one take, two take, three, four, five. And it's like, nah, I suck, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and it wouldn't have done anything. So being in a, on a live stream session is like, well, this is this is what it is. Yeah. And then, you know, there are many details in each of the videos are like, oh, that could have been better. But it's like, anything else there's always something that can be uh, better in your head before the people outside is like that was beautiful yeah. and you know then the most rewarding thing is like people would be like man i dedicated this 
to my wife or I dedicated this to my husband or he reminded me of my wedding day. I cried, you know, just oh, things man. that that's why we musicians exist. Yeah, you know, just, that's what music does or mm. supposed to do, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great so. to still be able to kind of have that impact on people and have that personal connection even when we're just sitting at home <laughs> dressed yep. from the waist up <laughs> yeah here here in, in my office in my office <laughs> now are you are you guys still in virginia yes yes we're still in virginia nice nice so it's, it's pretty cool uh, you know it's more slow paced than the city mm -hmm. but it's, it's pretty cool once we're able to kind of safely travel again is there some place you're most looking forward to to go in that's an interesting question. I don't know if I have an answer for that. Mm. Before this whole pandemic started, Angela and I, Angela, my wife, had a trip to Germany just to pick up her bassoon, her new instrument. And they said, hey, you know, let's just try to make, take a train and go, you know, to London and maybe Paris, you know, just, you know, our first trip as a couple. So after all this is done, and while we still have time, and not so many obligations, if you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, you know, it's a matter of just, you know, travel and check up the, you know, put the check on the on the bucket list. Okay, mm. check, 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 as much as we possibly can. Travel, actually, I was talking yesterday uh, to a friend from El Salvador, and they were saying, okay, once it's over, you can come home and, you know, we'll show you all the nice places. I've never been to South America before. Oh, so cool. it'd be cool, you know. Yeah. So yeah, that's a lot of traveling essentially is, is my plan. Anywhere. Yeah. Any it doesn't honestly it doesn't matter. Just <laughs> No, just get out of here, man. Out of the city. <laughs> Let's just get out. Yeah. Ugh. So claustrophobic sometimes. And so that was shortly so you you traveled with Angela. That was just like right after your wedding. That was a little over a year ago, right? Yes. Uh our wedding was January fifth of twenty twenty. So, you know, we, I guess, uh, well, we went on a cruise and we went to the Bahamas and all that. And I guess that's when the cruise were still safe uh, oh, because sure. I, a little bit, a, li a few weeks after, you know, all the cruises were like, nope, you're not coming here. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, God. So imagine going on your cruise with Angela and then like being stuck at a, at a port. They're just like, nope, no, you're nope. stuck. You're not coming in. Nope. Here. Oh, no. that'd be horrible. A lot of, like everybody else, a lot of the plans are, you know, we never got to go to Germany because of the COVID and, and everything, all that. So that's that's on our bucket list. Yeah. So how's, how's married life treating you? Well, it's, it's been interesting, you know. Well, this is this is not going to be a marriage council, but, you know. <laughs> um, it's, it's like get, getting re-educated in a certain way. It's like, for example, let's just say this. Mm. I like this tool here, but she likes it here. <laughs> and it's like, it's the same thing. It should be here. Yeah. But if you move it here, people are unhappy. So, you know, it's like, okay, so let's negotiate. And I'll, okay, I'll put it here. Yeah. You know, those those type of things. But besides that, those trivial things, you know, it's, sure. it's, it's been wonderful. And it's been so great to have uh, more support, you know, of another person mm -hmm. that is a musician and knows the struggle. And vice versa, yeah. you know, it's like, don't worry, you know, you got to practice, you know, let's practice, you know, and so nice. it's good to have that push. Um, it's like, you know, you don't practice, you lose it. And at some point, thanks to her, I started getting back into shape because I was not that good. That's a good motivation <laughs> for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, how, how's she doing? What's she up to? Well, she's also part of the guest artist for... Uh, for this University. yeah for the florida university okay. let me let me show you real quick uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. i don't uh, want to keep uh, it too long let me see oh wow okay so this is our little space where we do you know some you know recording oh, nice. yeah like wow that's a nice you got. <laughs> yeah uh her bassoon congas and guitar because why not there's Angela. Hi, Angela. <laughs> say hi, Angela. Hello. Hey, let me hear it. You can say. Oh, hi. hi. Good How good are you? you? I'm doing all right. Doing all right. Who, who, plays, who plays the drums? Uh, well, Not oh, me. so remember <laughs> a 
about you know being open to multiple things so mm. you know we started this music academy and the idea was to hire professionals to teach but at this point you know that didn't happen sure. so we little by little start getting instruments and i with a lot of different time with most of us have i started learning drums so oh, wow. i teach drums um you know i'm not a professional drummer but you know i can keep a bit steady i also you know teach some bass teach some guitar wow. some saxophone anything anything <laughs> <laughs> anything and everything nice. uh, so yeah <laughs> that's that's our lives nice well to anyone watching if you want to study literally anything <laughs> Gio's hey. your guy if you're in the yeah. wh where in virginia are you <laughs> i'm near richmond near richmond uh, oh nice yeah nice so if you're in the richmond area once things in person start happening yeah say hi yeah. and yeah. and we have we have for all the people that you know want to study we have some good coffee makers so we are Ooh. we are positive that if you don't like the class at least you like the coffee so there you go <laughs> <laughs> That's a good, that's a good tagline. You yeah. See? Academy. That's wonderful. Hey, hey, you, you need, you know, you need to make it happen. <laughs> yeah. If you just give them like a little espresso ahead of time and during the lesson, they're going to be like, this is amazing. Exactly. I'm, you know, so, this, I'm so raring to go. It's, it's all, you know, psychology, you know, yeah, that's, that's, it. Very that's, cool. that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to, you know, for the debut uh, of your album and, I need to say this, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be nice or anything. The first reaction that I had when I heard it was like, man, this guy sings so perfect. Dang it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it was like, man. And, and also the, the quality was like, I wonder, you know, where he, he recorded this or studio. It just sounds like, you know. With some of the vocals, I on Sundays, I, I am the, a church organist out on Long Island in Port Jeff. And... For the vocals, I, I was a little intimidated about singing like full voice in my small apartment. Um, so I would go out on like a Saturday to church when I knew no one was going to be there. Then I'd set up in the sanctuary and then I could just like, wow, uh, uh, okay, as need be. So that's my little recording secret there. Yeah, yeah there you go. A living example of being versatile, you know. There you go. Use yeah. use the equipment you have and the space you have to do what you can. And there's a lot you can do if you're creative yeah. within your, the constraints that you have. So see guys, I'm mind blown because you know I'm I'm used to listening to albums and people want, you know, me to critique it and see, you know, how it sounds, whatever. And if I were to review to give a review, it's like, man, these vocals are perfect. <laughs> Seriously. I'm not, I'm not kidding. I was like, man, I'm really happy that you consider me, you know, to be oh, part of, uh, of this project. Totally. And, you know, the people that you have there involved as well, you know, I love them as a person and as a musician. So it's, it's going to be, a, it's going to feel like a, a, another family project, you know, just going out there. So it's, 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 it's beautiful. So thank you for having me. Definitely. Hey, thank you so much for, for playing on it. I mean, when it came... I, I knew I wanted to include a lot of Roots people, and when it came to including a, a flutist on the album, there was no question. No question. <laughs> um, I'll include links below for, for Gio and how you can kind of listen, listen to what he's up to. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Likewise. Yeah. Take care. Bye.